Hey everybody, it's Ashley Ray from Let's Talk Racestyle.com and as a Detroit girl, I wanted to give you all a recap of Auntie Ree, aka Aretha Franklin's funeral. So let's get started. First of all, I saw the itinerary like two days before the funeral and when I looked at it, I said, this funeral is not going to start on time. They had each person scheduled for speaking time for five minutes. Now, anybody who's ever been to a black church knows that just the noises that they make while preaching is about five minutes long. So it was no way that each person was gonna get up there and speak for just five minutes. That's all I'm saying. So, around 12 o'clock, I think it started because I started watching at like 10 and it was still just showing like all the people getting there. Um, when we talk about Cicely Tyson's hat, that hat had to be custom made to fit her head and her body. That hat was life. That hat said, I am all supreme Cicely Tyson. That hat was amazing. That hat deserved its own seat at the funeral and time to speak. That's just how I felt. Bishop Ellis. Mm. So those things that we should not say in public forums or amongst other people because it makes us look ignorant, okay? Telling Ariana Grande that he thought that she was um, an item on the Taco Bell menu, a new item on the Taco Bell menu, like, why would you say that? But she is of Italian descent, not Mexican or whatever it was that he was aiming at. That was... That was so rude and it was very obvious that she was already nervous, you know? And um, I was wondering why she looked so puzzled when he was talking to her and he kind of like grabbed her. I didn't know, of course, until the next day when the media came with those pictures showing that he was grabbing like this area. Of, it was like right, right there. It was her boob. He was grabbing her boob, which explains her facial expressions while he was talking to her. She looks very uncomfortable. A lot of men do have that grope. It's usually right here or just at the waistline. I don't know if you guys can see me, but anyway, here and the butt area. I, I don't know what that's about, but it is very uncomfortable. She looks very uncomfortable. So that was terrible, right? Okay. Let me tell you something. I am not a religious person. But it is the Clark sisters that you will show your respect to and Yolanda Adams. Yolanda Adams could be singing, Mary Had a Little Lamb, and I promise you I will probably cry. Like, that's what her voice does to me. And um, I was kind of mad that she didn't get to sing Mary Don't You Weep by herself. I think that they did a good job by putting non-soul singers in the program first. So it's kind of like the non-soul singers prepped you for the soul singers. I thought that was that was in good taste. <sighs> Michael Eric Dyson is amazing. And I'm not just saying that because he's from Detroit. I'm saying that because I've read his books. I followed his work. I've watched him defend the legacy, the honor, and the basis of hip-hop on national panels and platforms the man just has a way with words his speech was nothing short of amazing and i appreciated that reverend jasper williams now don't get me wrong all of the speakers turned their speech to a political political speech in some way shape or form which is to be expected and a lot of people were offended by that but you have to understand that one Aretha Franklin played a major role within the civil rights movement at the end of respect when she says uh, take care of TCB which is taking care of business that was a street term used in these political movements amongst black people to, to take care of your business if you didn't know that that's what it means so i get it 
but it's also an election year. But what I did not expect was for Reverend Jasper Williams to basically express his views and opinions, which are the same as our oppressors, on a national platform at a black woman's funeral. A black woman who has raised black sons. I didn't even... I have not, I didn't even put that together until just now. And sorry to get high pitched on you guys, but he literally said that black women cannot raise black sons. You're at a woman's funeral who raised four black sons. Now, granted, Aretha's grandmother played a major role in her oldest two sons' lives because, of course, she was touring. And her, that was at the start of her career, you know, so, but that's still a black woman raising black sons. So how dare he even say that at her funeral? Now, I'm not saying that a black woman can teach a man how to be a man, but what she can do is raise him and teach him how to be a decent human being, which is what many black mothers do. Then he made a remark about black women staying out of abortion clinics. So what is it? What, I, what I'm trying to figure out is what are we tailing here? You said that black women can't raise black sons and that we also need to stay out of abortion clinics. So we can't raise them, but we can't abort them either. Some people should just shut the fuck up. And that's just how I feel about it. Just shut the fuck up because you don't even know what you're saying at this point. Then he got on the Black Lives Matter movement and... How is it that we're upset when police officers um, kill black, black people, people of color, but we're not upset when black people kill other black people? Okay, so you clearly do not read. You don't pay attention to what's going on. You're not even active in your own community. I always remember stop the violence, protest, marches, walks whatever you want to call them those were all about stop the violence protests are all about crime within your community however how dare you try to compare two totally different scenarios the police are supposed to protect and serve that's what your tax dollars pay them for not to make you a criminal because you're walking down the street or they don't like the way you look we're not supposed to have constant fear of the police. And when they commit a crime, such as killing an unarmed person of color, you're supposed to go to jail. They don't go to jail. They aren't punished for their crime. So, and, and my thing is, I mean, we could have made the same argument for white on white crime. White people kill white people all the time, but is that a topic of discussion? Most of them won't even acknowledge that white on white crime exists, even though we know it's like 85 to 90%. I was very disappointed and Michael Eric Dyson said that he was old school preaching. I don't really know what that means. I'm sorry. I don't know what that means, old school preaching. All I have to say is he was saying some bullshit and somebody should have called him out on his bullshit right then and there. I was pissed, I was livid. Other than that, I think everything went rather well. And I have to say that my favorite part of the funeral was actually when Aretha Franklin's niece went up to talk about what Aretha Franklin meant to her. I thought that was beautiful. It it was very it was very heartfelt. You know, she gave some great details um, about her and her aunt's relationship. So many people in the city were lined up outside just to see the cars go by, and I thought it was great that they changed her clothes. Um, each time that she was laid out at the museum, they changed her clothes and they changed her clothes for the funeral. And if anybody has ever been to Detroit, they know that we dress. So I thought that was very fitting that um, they changed her clothes, crossed her feet. That was a clear diva move. And um, it was just a sight to see. Of course, we're sorry to see her go, but it was very nice to see her put away so well. So anyway, that is my recap on Aretha Franklin's funeral. And to check out more blogs and more things Ashley Ray, you can go to letstalkracestyle.com. Smooches.